when it comes to india's judiciary there are many things that can be said there are many things that cannot be said but on a day when four sitting supreme court judges made the unprecedented move of coming out and addressing a press conference remember this never happens sitting judges never speak the only time you ordinarily hear them speak is on the day of their retirement otherwise they write through letters they never ever meet the media what they've done really needs to be put into context because why is it that these judges were so upset what does this mean about the manner in which the supreme court was being run by the chief justice let me now try and get you some of the thinking the reasons behind justice chalameshwar's outburst he'd been upset for the government and the supreme court chief justice for some time now the trigger was the appointment of nine judges to the andhra high court of uh, these some were seen to be those being suggested by justice chalameshwar this also was cleared by the collegium but when the file reached the government there was an inordinate delay and this meant that there was a delay in the seniority of the judges this is when justice ramana stepped in and it seemed as if the candidates that he was pushing for were being favored 9 months later the file did ultimately get cleared but by then the damage had already been done remember when the judges were asked in the press conference this afternoon whether justice loya's death and his case the petition which is currently in front of the supreme court had anything to do with their press conference they said yes those three letters by themselves have devastating consequences i want to go across now to one of the most informed journalists covering the supreme court our legal correspondent anusha soni is joining us people have never seen this lawyers have never seen this reporters covering india's judiciary have never seen this anusha try and leave the legal jargon aside and explain to those tuning into india today at this time why did these four judges do what no judge has done in recent memory Well, uh, Rahul, as you pointed pointed out, the only precedent is the emergency era. Right now, all I can you know put into context for our viewers is that when reform doesn't come from outside, it grows up from within. The MCI scam was a huge tipping point, a clear division between the Chief Justice of India and Court Number Two. Even during that day, when Prashant Bhushan witnessed ugly scenes, uh, you know, in the Chief Justice Court, in Court Number One at the Supreme Court of India, even that day there were rumours that there is a meeting happening between Justice Lokur. Justice Korean Joseph and Justice Gogoi. Also today, with uh, the Judge Loya case coming up for hearing today, there were rumours that it is again allocated to a bench which heard the MCI scam, which is the bench of Justice Arun Mishra. Now there have been objections, uh, you know, in the corridors. We have heard these rumours, but suddenly at 11:30 a.m. there were rumours coming in that a press conference is being held. Very soon we got the confirmation from the office of Justice Chela Mishra, and he said that all of us must come there. He said it very categorically that time and again. they have written letters they are not happy with the way administration of the supreme court is going cases are being allocated without following the due process orders are being overturned of the two benches by the three benches that this cannot happen in the supreme court at the same time there is no clarity why all the contentious cases are going to one particular bench all of these issues rahul and you know covering this on a day to day basis i'm really not surprised at this outburst one day Anusha, or the other now there this are had to come out and i'm 20 judges out, in the supreme court is that correct we've judge. seen so far a rebellion open rebellion by four two other supreme court judges later went and met justice chalameshwar at his kushak road residence that makes it six there is the chief justice seven what about the other dozen plus judges where do they stand on this very clear division where you've got a chief justice against whom very serious charges are being leveled and his own colleagues who are rising against him where do the other judges stand anusha So Rahul it's not any more hearsay but there are clear cams within the Supreme Court right now a number of judges are citing with uh, what uh, Justice Chalameshwar has done today but increasingly increasing number of judges are also on the side of chief justice it wouldn't be proper to name these judges but uh, what i hear is that two other judges along with the attorney general also had a meeting with the chief justice of india this schism is now out in the open these cams are out in the open very interesting development here Rahul that the chief justice 
of India's court assembled at 2 p.m. today. All of us went inside, even the lawyers, expecting some sort of reaction from the CGI. But he seemed like uh, cool as a cucumber and he continued uh, with his uh, everyday working. At 12.30 p.m. today, uh, there was a whistle in the Supreme Court and all the guards uh, hurriedly came in, took the Chief Justice out. The court was disrupted. Right now, only two courts are sitting, court number 11 and court number 1. Usually on a Friday, we do have certain benches sitting right now, but most of the judges right now are divided into camps. Where does this lead to? It will it will depend, as I've been repeatedly saying, on the on the reaction of the Chief Justice of India. And clearly, this even of the India, government Anusha and the executive was will have a very supposed to, to maybe make a statement, say something in court, possibly even address the media. Is he going to do anything like this, or? Is he just going to, you know, make it seem as if nothing's happened and there's nothing to talk about? Well, the latter seems to be more likely. However, at 2 p.m., what we heard from very reliable sources is that he was about to issue a statement. There's, a, there's still no clarity about whether he's going to address the press or not. Uh, well, the strategy right now, what we hear, is to behave like nothing has happened. However, you cannot really deny what is happening. Okay. With the increasing number of judges, you know, heading into one camp or the other. The okay, I'm going to come back to you, Anusha, because... The Chief Justice cannot pretend that nothing has happened because right under his nose, a judicial earthquake has blown up in his face and in the face of this government and in the face of the people of India. And you can't pretend as if there is no problem and that everything is kosher and there is no reason for alarm. There is huge reason for alarm because remember these judges never speak in public. The fact that they are speaking in public and it's not just a vanilla press conference, you've got the judges rising in virtual revolt against the Supreme Court Chief Justice is something that cannot be dismissed easily. I want to listen to Justice Ganguly, former Justice of the Supreme Court. Uh, very well-known, very respected judge. Let's see what he has to say about these four Supreme Court judges rising in rebellion against the Chief Justice. Sir, today four judges of uh, Supreme Court has come against this uh, Chief Justice of India. So what is your reaction regarding this? No, I, hearing the press conference, I felt extremely shocked and if I may say so devastated <coughs> because this is totally unprecedented that four sitting judges of Supreme Court will come out openly in a press conference and say something about the improper functioning of this of the Supreme Court in view of the way the Chief Justice is functioning this is something unprecedented and I was shocked about the whole thing I must say Well, sir, they have also have a point of view because their point of view is that they were requesting the Chief Justice in, in several matters. <coughs> they have also issued a letter. <coughs> How do you see, see the role of Chief Justice of India? The Chief Justice, in my humble opinion, I, I, I have, a, have a great regard for this Honorable Chief Justice, but in my humble opinion, Chief Justice should try to evolve uh, consensus and try to evolve in a manner which comes which becomes acceptable to his colleagues and he must not take a, a view which is not which is not found reasonable to the colleagues he must act in a in, a, in an eminently reasonable that's justice ganguly i want to bring in legal luminaries at this time to try and make sense you know it's not just now about taking sides far more important is to understand what it ha what has happened and why and what this means that really to my mind is most crucial before sitting in on judgment on these judges or deciding whether the chief justice is right let's just try and understand what happened i want to go across to kts tulsi eminent senior supreme court advocate he's joining us on this broadcast also member of the Rajya Sabha, mr tulsi welcome try and explain to our viewers why did this earthquake blew up in the face of the Indian judiciary. What do you think has just happened and why, sir? You see, <clears throat> so far as this letter is concerned, I have that in front of me. In the letter, there are three things that are mentioned briefly. One is that the, with regard to judicial orders which have adversely affected the functioning of the justice delivery system. 
and the second is administrative uh, administrative functioning of the court is not up to the mark etc now the third is with regard to memorandum of procedure because memorandum of procedure is one thing that has been hanging fire and in the letter there are two twice a reference to rp luthra and whatever happened when when he appeared before the chief justice see why it blew up i i can't speculate on the judicial or the administrative reasons which the ju judges are privy to because they haven't perhaps chosen to spell them out and it i i won't like to speculate on that but i can tell you that the most fundamental rule of law the worry with regard to the sustainability of rule of law with almost 40 to 50% posts of the constitutional courts lying vacant is a matter of great worry mr tulsi you, you know already you, you spend all your time inside the supreme court and i'm going to ask you some direct questions yes. because as people watch this the one thing that's in their mind is very simply this is this really about yes some procedural problem in the supreme court that the supreme court judges don't think that they're getting important cases and that important cases are being given to other benches or do they believe that the current chief justice of india at the behest of the government is assigning to susceptible or pliable benches cases which have huge ramifications which one is it sir no 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 neither of them i am not privy to anything as lawyers we don't come to know why a particular case has been listed before a particular bench we are only trained to to appear to law to lawyer and it doesn't really matter which way is the result but we 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 sometimes speculate in our own minds as to why uh, something has happened but as disciplined lawyers we know that uh, the, there are predilections of judges and of course many a times we we feel that if a matter goes to a particular court they we we hardly have any chance and uh, it's because of every judge is a human being they have predilections now what machinations went behind the scene i don't know i at least i am not a lawyer in those cases but i can tell you that their frustration is arising out of a deadlock in the memorandum of procedure as a result of which the ex efficacy of the ju judicial function judicial administration is grossly eroded and if the rule of law is not pr uh, protected it it's going to impact justice if it impacts justice delivery system obviously it's going to impact the stability of democracy and it is also said processes. that we justice couldn't have kept quiet because we didn't democracy. want that wise men 20 years hence say we sold our souls they feel that uh, the very future of democracy is in peril why why are they saying this in your view yes they felt you see they are saying because if they if you are going to cut off they post to half where the demand is to double them obviously they are not going to be able to dispense justice and to me that is a very serious matter the they, they are all members of collegium the collegium has drawn redrawn re redrawn the memorandum of procedure sent it to the government government sometimes gets back sometimes doesn't get back and it gets back on the time and manner of their choosing so so it it uh, is uh, impacting the appointment of judges it is impacting the justice delivery system according to me and this is most when disturbing. the judges were I'm asked so glad that whether the justice loya petition which was to court. come up for hearing uh today was also one of the triggers they said yes now justice loya is the judge who passed away allegedly under mysterious circumstances who was investigating a case which had uh, direct consequences on uh, the bjp president now the question is where is 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 the suggestion this mr tulsi that the four judges who rebelled today felt that the justice loya case will be given to a pliable judge one who would dismiss it 
in the same manner in which the case about the Medical Council of India was dismissed. No, I do not think so. I do not think because they have not mentioned this case specifically in the, in, in the letter that is given to the Chief Justice. I do not know whether, whether this fact, uh, I, I heard the press conference, I was not certain whether the response was in the affirmative by the judges with regard to ju Judge Lua. I want to bring in Indira Jai Singh now. Indira Jai Singh is another very prominent advocate of the Supreme Court. She is joining us at this time and ma'am is someone who has spoken very strongly against things that you have seen happen in the judiciary. Try and put into context for our viewers this judicial earthquake. Why do you think these four judges rebelled in the way that they did? Rumble, I think this has been in the making for quite some time now. And uh, my concern is it goes back to the former Chief Justice as well. Uh, we have been noticing that cases that concern the uh, present government are either thrown into cold storage, ignored, neglected. To give you an example, demonetization was challenged and uh, has not been listed till today for hearing. It took a long time for us to get Aadhaar on board uh, and uh, we have been very worried about the fact that at, on the other hand you had triple salad being fast track. So we are indeed very concerned about the fact that how does the Supreme Court prioritize this hearing? That's one issue. It's been going on for a long time. And the second issue obviously is that why do particular judges get particular types of cases and not other judges? And uh, I think you're very right about saying, uh, just to answer Mr. Tulsi, he said there is no reference. Can you hear me, Rahul? Well, Ms. Jason, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, I heard uh, Mr. Tulsi saying that there's no mention of uh, Judge Loya in the letter. That's true. But I was present at the press conference and a specific question was put to the judges. Why did you go and meet the Chief Justice today morning? And was it in connection with the Justice Loya affair? And they nodded their head and said yes. So uh, there's a clear indication that that case did trouble them. The assignment uh, to uh, Justice Arun Mishra was troublesome for these four judges. That was rather obvious. No, but that is very, very devastating because what that suggests is that you've got at this time judges in the Supreme Court who not just have lost faith in the Chief Justice but also believe that this Chief Justice will assign to judges uh, cases which are sensitive, which uh, then can be dismissed in a manner in which uh, they may not get a full hearing. And if that is the suggestion, then really this is the biggest disruption in Indian judiciary we've ever seen, ma'am. Yes, Rahul, you were right in describing it as an earthquake. And I personally feel uh, it's like uh, revisiting the moments that happened during the emergency when uh, we were let down by the judiciary. Now, uh, please understand that Justice Loya died in suspicious circumstances, but he was hearing the case against Amit Shah, the president of the BJP, and now a member of parliament. And I know that the, uh, he was, uh, just, uh, Amit Shah was discharged uh, by the judge who came after Justice Loya, and a petition filed by us to question that order of discharge was also summarily dismissed by several courts, including the High Court and the Supreme Court. So I, I think you got it right when you say that there is something really wrong. And uh, I think to myself, I'm very happy that four senior judges have chosen. Uh, you know, they you know Indira Jai Singh, I have a counter yes. for you. Now, when people look at the judiciary, and it's always yeah. been this way, you don't really question why has a judge given a certain judgment. You know, these things can be discussed in the corridors of the High Court, the Supreme Court, but outside yeah. people assume that the judge looked at both sides and came up with the best possible judgment. But the moment yeah. you've got serving justices, this is not an Indira Jai Singh or a Prashant Bhushan leveling these charges. Yeah. These are serving Supreme Court judges. Now, yeah. henceforth, whenever people look at any judgment, they will wonder was he assigned this case because the Chief Justice or the government thought he'll help them get away? 
what is the motive is he batting for some corporate is he batting for some political party do you not believe that there is also a possibility that this press conference by these judges does long term damage to the way the judiciary is perceived in this country okay let me answer that question it's an important question that is going to depend on how the chief justice of india responds to this press conference I have already gone on record to say there is only one solution to this problem and that is all the senior judges including the chief justice of India must sit together and resolve it they must find a rational way of assigning cases they must discuss between themselves uh, which case should be assigned to whom yes we know that the chief justice is the master of the role but that can't make him Uh, an arbitrary master of the rules yes he needs to take on record the feedback that he's getting from his folk senior colleagues and if he does that then the damage that you talk about can be avoided rahul there's an additional point i wish to make i want to know why the lawyers of this country are so silent at this point of time let me tell you at times when the judiciary is under threat it is only the legal profession that can come forward and defend the independence of the judiciary i would definitely appeal to the legal profession to also raise their voice and say yes we are think you're absolutely right because a lot of the lawyers are part of the same gravy train and speaking out could potentially hurt them and therefore naturally many of the lawyers we're trying to get in touch with are saying no comments we're just watching what's happening and we don't want to speak i think indira jay singh has a very important point four judges have spoken out will the lawyers reflect on their conscience and speak out either way you can speak out in favor of the chief justice you can speak out against but can you afford to be silent on a day when the biggest earthquake just blew up in the face of india's judiciary giving not just the modi government but also the people of india a lot to think about we're slipping into a quick break a non-stop relentless coverage of this judicial earthquake continues on the other side of a quick break stay with us thanks for watching the video for more such news and updates please like share and subscribe to india today also check out our other great videos from our channel we know you would love to